All right, here we go on this test. N B R three. You might think it looked like that, but really, we're going to draw it like this because nitrogen tribromide has two left over on top. The shape is trigonal pyramidal. Okay. Label the type of intermolecular bonds. Well, if you had another one right here, right? If you had another one, this bond right here would be dipole, dipole. It would be dipole, dipole. That bond would be dipole, dipole. Use your electronegativity chart. Are the bonds between N and Br ionic, polar covalent, or non-polar covalent? All right. So we look here. Let's see. N is 3.04. And Br is 2.96. So that difference is so small. This is these are these bonds right here are non-polar covalent. There's a really, really, really covalent bonds right there. Okay. All right. Let's try the next one. SF2. Could have an S in the middle. It would have that right there. Got two left over pairs up there. It's bent, right? It's bent. Uh, if it was held to another SF2, then that would be dipole, dipole. The shape itself. The shape is polar. This shape up here was polar too. Trigonal pyramid is polar. Okay, use your chart. The bond between S and F, what would that be like? All right, S is 2.58 minus F is 3.98, so let's say 3.98. My so, oh, that's 1.4 apart. This is actually a that bond is actually polar covalent. That's actually a polar covalent bond right there because F is 3.98, F is 2.58. Label the shape, polarity, yeah, it's polar. All unbound pairs, there they are. N2, N2 gonna look like this. It's linear. It's linear. It's obviously nonpolar because it's the same on each side. The bonds would be completely nonpolar. If it was held to other N2s, since it's nonpolar, anything that's nonpolar will have to be forced together and be London dispersion. Okay? Flipping it over, BCL3, got a B. It's only got three dots to begin with, so when it's joined, it's just going to be flat. So that's trigonal, planar. Label the shape, trigonal, the shape name, label the polarity, it's nonpolar. We know what that looks like. It's nonpolar. We showed all unbound pairs. Label the type of intermolecular bonds. It would have to be London dispersion. Anything that's nonpolar, we put London dispersion. CF4. Boom, 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 boom. F, 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 F. We got to put all the unbound pairs. I'm going to use lines instead of dots this time because I'm lazy. It's nonpolar. It's tetrahedral. 
Now, in honors, all bonds of sigma or pi, sigma, 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 sigma. I'll only ask about sigma or pi if it's a carbon in the middle. Show the hybridization. There's four sigmas, so we're going to have our 1s going to stay the same. And then our sp, there's going to be four, because every sigma means sp. Up, 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 up. It's an S and three P's. It's called SP3 hybridized. Label the type of intermolecular bonds that would hold them together. Again, London dispersion. Anything that is nonpolar, like this tetrahedral thing, is going to be held together by London dispersion. Okay? Here at the end, C2, H2. Mm, got to have a triple in there. All right, draw this. You do not need to label the shape, even though we can see it's linear. Label all the bonds, sorry about the wiggling. Label all the bonds, sigma, 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 pi, pi. Now we gotta do the hybridization, okay? One, S, up, down. There's one, two, three sigmas there. So S, P, one, two, two, up, up, up. No, no, no. Well, I just made a mistake. Scratch that. We can, we can only talk about one of the carbon atoms. So my brain was just off there. So let's look at this guy right here. This carbon atom right here. He's got two sigmas and two pi's. So one S up, down. That's always the same. Now there's two sigmas. So there's two beside the SP. That would be called SP1. And then there's two pi's left over two overlapping p overalls. That's exactly what that looks like. All right, people. Good luck.